So recently I've had my eye on the Arri Trinity, you know, the hybrid number and a steady cam and a gimbal all in one kind of stabilized package and that. But I consulted the wallet and it turns out I ain't got a spare 50 grand. So instead of buying the Arri Trinity, I decided to make myself the, uh, the Arri Mini. Lots. I hope you're all sweet. So yeah, mate, this is my fake Arri Trinity, the Arri Minity, the Peasant Trinity, whatever you really want to call it. Now, if you don't know what the actual real Arri Trinity is, I really recommend going and checking out Potato Jet's video with a geezer called Ari Robbins. Ari's an actual Trinity operator. Sick job, sick geezer. So I definitely recommend going and checking that out if you don't know what the Arri Trinity actually is. And as sick as the Arri Trinity is as a filmmaking tool, it just turns out that a lot of us like, you know, solo shooters ain't really got a spare 50 grand line about to buy an Arri Trinity. Now my mate Josh Morgan over at Momentum Productions actually done one of these on his Instagram page and I was like, mate, that looks a bit sick. I'm gonna have to get my mitts on one of them. So I decided to make myself one out of an old stabilizer that I had lying about. I've had this for about 10 years now, this thing, is battered. It was originally the Flycam 3000, but the bottom of it fell off while I was uh, trying to make this video. So it's now, as you can see, the, the Flycam 300. And then we've got a Webuilt S gimbal on the top of our stabilizer. So what is actually the point of combining a gimbal with a Steadicam? Now, a Steadicam works a little bit differently to a gimbal. A Steadicam will actually stabilize your footage, but it'll also have a little bit of movement. Now, manually, you can use your hand to pan, to tilt the camera, whenever you want to. And when you're actually walking along, a steady cam will actually dampen your up and down movements because obviously all of your weight is in here. Typically, it's attached to a spring arm attached to a vest so that you can take all of that weight on your back instead of holding it on your arm, mate. My arm is buggered after shooting all this footage. However, a gimbal does not take out this axis of stabilization. It does take out your tilt, it also takes out your roll, and it will allow you to pan really, really smoothly. The fake Trinity, old rules is look, the light's coming, bruv, look. Look, check out the light, bro. Check out the light. Is it overexposed? Yeah, Let me dip that down. Let me show the people, mate. Look, that's what we call some Essex light. Anyway. So, yeah, mate, the fake Trinity. I'm gonna be doing some tracking shots, some spinning shots, some orbits and that. But the best thing about this is getting rid of that kind of bobble that you usually get from a normal gimbal. Using the gimbal stabilization so that your horizon's straight, mate, and you can go from being up here to being down here, tracking here, bosh, and back up, mate. Oh, the transitions. So peng. Right. It's breaking Lights through, in. mate. It's breaking Let's through. make the most of this one, mate. So combining a Steadicam and a gimbal essentially has all of the benefits of having a gimbal. So you've still got your nice smooth panning. You've also taken the tilt out of it along with your row axis. But when you're walking along, you're taking out, this probably looks proper weird. You take out that bobble from bumping up and down when you're shooting with a gimbal. Right, mate, if you're gonna do this, get yourself a Steadicam stand or in this case, a light stand. Now another really important feature of the Trinity is the fact that you can pretty much get it into really tight small spots that you can't typically just get a gimbal in. So when I was setting up to do a shot with the Minity, I wanted to do a really long tracking shot that got the gimbal in loads of small different areas that are quite hard to get a gimbal. So the whole idea for this shot is I wanna be right over the table pulling across the table and each time we kind of come a little bit further. We're basically like revealing something about the scene. And then obviously we reveal that my mate Jack, the one behind the BTS camera bruv, um, is sitting on the table looking for something online. Obviously, if you look at what he's looking for, it's obviously pretty, pretty important. I want the camera to be moving at all times. I never want the camera to kind of stop still. Um, I think that for me anyway, that's the whole point of a nice gimbal shot that is constantly flowing, constantly moving. So when we come across the table, I then want like a nice dramatic pull down. And then basically what we do is track Jack's feet. And if you look at the way that I turn the gimbal, I can actually twist 
this bottom element of the steady cam and it is going to pan the gimbal for me so as jack's coming along i can pan it with my fingers here keep it nice and nice and low and then the plan is we slowly lift up and we just tip across the table and then we push through and the same on the other shot except reverse we're pushing through all of this stuff on the table and we're constantly finding out more about this little story that this investigator is trying to get on with so yeah now i'm not gonna lie if you're doing this without a spring arm and a vest this thing gets f heavy mate so when i had the steady cam across the table any time that you bring a steady cam away from you especially if you haven't got a spring arm attached that is going to be so taxing on your arm so when i was across the table like this it was so hard to keep that shot steady because man that is so hard on your arms however when you bring the steady cam closer to your body this is going to be so much easier so much smoother and easier to handle and then with your left hand you can do all of your micro adjustments go into low mode whatever you want to do now in terms of just pure stabilization of your shot the steady cam and the gimbal combined 100 percent gave you a much nicer smoother shot now this shot here definitely would have had a few bobbles up and down if you were shooting handheld just with the gimbal and you're actually walking so using this Arri Minity really kind of allowed that shot to be so much more smooth, taking out the last final axis that isn't actually stabilized. And um, yeah, mate, it actually come out. So I was so surprised at how well it worked. Especially when you're in low mode, it's so easy to really keep that camera at a level point because when you're on a gimbal and you get your gimbal really close to the floor and you're pushing forwards, you can see them bobbles clear as day with a normal gimbal. However, when I was using this, I got really, really close to the ground, and my God, there was hard, it looked like it was a bloody drone shot, mate. And when you're in low mode, panning is so simple, mate. You've literally just got to pan the camera with your fingertips. Now, the main issue that I found with this setup is panning whilst you're transitioning from high mode to low mode or vice versa. Because typically when you pan with a gimbal, all you do is literally pan it. And the same again in low mode, you can literally just pan the gimbal. However, when you are in this mode, which isn't a typical mode for a gimbal or a steady cam, if you pan this axis, the gimbal is not panning anymore. Now the axis is actually on this motor here. So you're gonna pan it by simply bringing the camera round. So what you've got to do is you've got to start your pan here, and as you come down, you then have to bring the camera round, and then when you're here, you're back to pan. Does this even make sense? Basically, when you're panning up here, you pan here. When you're panning here, you pan here on this axis, and then when you're back in low mode, you're back to panning here. Honestly, people, tell me if this don't make no sense, because, again, explaining things. I'm not the best. So yeah, there were a few little jolts in between my transitions, but I do feel like if you were to spend hours and hours operating this thing and actually getting good at it and getting used to the way it feels and actually setting up your rig, this is a bloody makeshift rig, do you know what I mean? If you actually done yourself a decent rig or you got an actual steady cam with a really good gimbal on top and a decent camera, I think you would really, really be able to master this. And another thing about setting up Typically what you're gonna to wanna to do is get the gimbal pretty much perfectly balanced before you chuck it onto your Steadicam. Now Steadicams are traditionally balanced heavier at the bottom than at the top. So when I done Steadicam, I was taught to have your Steadicam in the horizontal position. Two seconds, it should drop down to being vertical. Any quicker, it was too heavy at the bottom. Any slower, that is too light at the bottom. But with the Arri Trinity, from what I've seen, this ain't like, don't quote me on this, but it looks like the Trinity is balanced in harmony on both sides, so typically it won't do this. You should be able to let that go from the knuckle and it should just stay completely the same. That is so that you can very, very easily go from low mode to high mode and then you can basically have the most amount of agility at this knuckle point on the Trinity. So when you're balancing your Trinity, Minity in this case, whatever you want to call it, I think, don't quote me again, um, I'm pretty sure you want to balance it in harmony the whole way along from this knuckle joint. So mate, the Arri Minity, let's wrap this one up. Um, I would definitely use this in 
a situation that actually called for this tool to be used. Now the Arri Trinity has obviously massively evolved the standard Steadicam and handheld gimbal into this amazing hybrid number. Um, and I'm not comparing this to the actual Arri Trinity, like this is just a fucking 500 pound piece of crap basically compared to that. But you can still get some amazing quality shots and man, you should just check out the versatility of using this compared to just using a gimbal or a Steadicam. It is pretty damn mind blowing. Let me know if you wanna see another video when I try and perfect this. I'm definitely gonna get myself another stabilizer. This is a fly cam that I've had for 10 years. It's not actually big enough for this setup. Like this is like one of the smallest gimbal setups you can have. This isn't even long enough for it. So definitely gonna get myself another one of these. Might even get myself a vest with a spring arm so that I can actually use this properly, and you never know, mate, it might actually get used on some commercial work. That would be very bloody funny. And um, if I did, I'll definitely record that for you lot. So let me know in the comments what you thought of this. Is it a piece of crap? Am I an idiot for making it? Um, what do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Would you guys make one? Um, and do you want to see more content with the Ari Minity, mate? Um, yeah, I definitely want to make a better version because it's a bit rubbish. However, I do think an 150 pound Steadicam and a 350 pound gimbal combined don't work too bad at all, mate. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching, and I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. Bush.